Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Shaban, president and founder of Dominion Women's Health here in Richmond, Virginia. And what we've started is a podcast for women's health and different aspects of women's health. So each week, we're going to do a 30-minute podcast on different aspects of women's health and how it affects day-to-day -day life in America. So welcome back, guys. Last week, we did a podcast on bioidentical hormones and women's health. I'm Dr. Danny Shaban, founder of Dominion Women's Health, as well as the president of Dominion Women's Health. And what we talked about last week was bioidentical hormones, how it can affect women's health, what are the advantages and disadvantages. And we answered some questions at the end of the podcast. And today, what I'm going to try to do is go through some of the questions that were asked after the podcast and some of the follow-ups for bioidentical hormones. One of the biggest things that was asked in regards to the pellet therapy versus creams versus pills is a lot of um, patients reached out to us as well as people via Facebook, Twitter, in regards to what are pellets and what do the pellets look like. And I felt like the easiest thing to do was to bring a sample of the trocar or the insertion tray of the pellets in, as well as bring some pellets in and show you how small these pellets are and what they are like. Prior to showing you this pellet tray, I want to talk about how we put the pellets in, what the pellet effects are. So what we try to do is find a, basically in the buttocks, the fat area of the buttocks, we numb the skin with some lidocaine and make an insertion point for the pellets, drop the pellets in, put a steri strip and a Band-Aid, and the patient keeps that steri strip and Band-Aid on for two days. After two days, you're back to your normal routine. The only thing that we require our patients that do the pellet insertions is don't ride a bike, don't get into a jacuzzi, don't jump in the river or the ocean for just two days until that insertion point heals. Again, the pellets are basically bioidentical hormones that are man-made and they're made from yams and soy. So your body recognizes it as its own hormone and theoretically you need less hormone, less breakdown. There's no first pass effect, meaning that it doesn't go through your stomach your liver into your bloodstream. It goes directly from the subcutaneous fat into the bloodstream. So what I'm going to try to do right now is show you what the pellets look like. And when we look at the pellet itself is each, each patient has a specific dose for her pellets. And what we do is we calculate the dosage for the pellets according to what your hormone levels were. So if we look here, this is one of the pellets, okay? And this one is estradiol, and that one is 10 milligrams. So it shows you how small it is. And here is testosterone, which is 25 milligrams. So if we were to look at this, and this is to give you an example, those are the pellets right there, okay? And these pellets get lined up, okay? Right next to each other, and they get inserted. So what I try to do is, and I'll show you here, this is considered the trocar itself, that the pellet is introduced. So what we tend to do is take this pellet, so we take the trocar. Once the trocar is in under the skin, we pull that out and we take one of the pellets and put it in. And we always have the tray under because sometimes it will fall. So we introduce the pellet in, and then we just slip it in. And at the end, we pull it out and we put a dressing on. So that's the biggest thing with the pellets. The biggest question patients ask me all the time is how soon am I going to see a result with the pellets? And the great thing is, is that you're going to see a result in regards to the estrogen effect within four days. Within four, five days max, you'll notice, oh my God, I slept through the night. This was amazing. And then within three to maximum four weeks, it's usually three weeks, you'll get the testosterone effect where you have the energy, your sex drive, feeling like you've got 
the ability to conquer the world, that's when that part will kick in. That's what I love about the pellets. Um, the running joke in the practice is when patients come in and we talk about the pellets and they get it. I always tell them it's like that infomercial, you set it and forget it. That's the nice thing is once the pellets are in, you don't have to worry about taking something every day as a replacement. You don't have to worry about anything else. What is the downside to getting the pellets? Unlike a pill or a cream where you can stop it that day, you can't just come back to the office three days later and go, you know, Dr. Spann, I was thinking about it. I'd like to have them removed. No, that's not how it works. Once they're in, they're in. Yes, we're not married to any of this form of treatment. You can change, you can mix and match as you go along the year. So let's say, for instance, you do pellet therapy for your bioidentical hormone for four to six months, and then you say, you know what, I want to transition, maybe do creams. You can definitely switch that way. Um, but you just can't switch after three to four weeks with the pellets. You could with the creams or the pill. Um, the other big question that patients ask me is, how do you follow up with this whole hormone therapy? Well, what we try to do initially with patients is bring you back four weeks after your initial insertion, four weeks at, or four to six weeks after you do the creams or the pills, and we repeat your blood work. What we'll do on the repeat blood work is see if we hit our target mark. For instance, with pellets, we tell patients we want to get your hormone levels to this level. And when we repeat, if we're not there, we talk to the patient about giving a booster shot where we give whatever you need. Is it more estrogen, testosterone, progesterone? We figure out what you need and we give you back what you need to. And then bring you back after three months, make sure everything's going well for your next insertion. Is it common to get a booster shot? I think in the first year, yes, patients will get a booster just so that we can figure out from the levels and how your body's absorbed the hormones, whether it's with the creams or the pellets. But once we get into a routine, as long as something dramatic hasn't changed, for instance, you haven't lost a lot of weight or gained a lot of weight, usually your blood levels will be stabilized and we can maintain that. One of the other questions that was brought up after the last podcast is, Dr. Shaban, how long can I do this for? And that's an amazing question. I mean, most physicians, and when we come out of residency program, everyone's trained on, oh, you want to transition three to five years for hormone therapy. A lot of the European studies, as well as what's happening here in the United States is, is it really three to five years, or is it five to 10? Is it 10 to 20? And what I try to tell my patient, as long as you're healthy, you're doing well, and we're not seeing any contraindications to the hormone therapy, then we're going to continue as long as you want. I mean, what are my ages that I have patients? I have patients in their 30s, and I have patients in their 70s that are on hormone therapy. Um, it just depends. It's all patient-based, and that's where you want to have a good relationship with your physician or your provider. The other question that popped up after our last podcast is, how do you handle complications or side effects of the hormones? And that's a great, great question, because what you'll find around the United States is there's a lot of pop-up franchises for hormone therapy, either for men, women, or both. And what you want to find out, number one, is when you go to a provider or whoever's doing your hormone therapy, is are they able to manage the side effects of your treatment? It's great that they're giving you this treatment, but can they manage the side effects? And some of the side effects, the simple side effects with bioidentical hormones is for patients that still have a uterus, sometimes you'll start to spot while you're on the hormone therapy. And can your provider manage that? And what we tend to do for our patients, if they spot, we either increase or decrease their progesterone level, depending on their blood work. We also have the ability to do an ultrasound, to look at the lining of the uterus, to make sure there's no cysts on the ovaries or nothing going on with the uterus. And we can manage those patients. But we also have patients that see other providers outside of our practice. And we're able to send a consult to those providers saying, this is what's going on. But the great thing about our practice is we have the ability to manage our patients and manage any side effects. The other type of side effect that we sometimes will see with hormone therapy, especially initially 
by being on testosterone is you might get like a teenage acne or pimples popping up as the androgens in your body are building up. And yes, we have the ability to manage that where we give a certain form of diuretic or hormone reducer to get rid of the acne. Um, that's the amazing thing of having the ability to manage some of these side effects. Um, other questions that pop up is what happens if I get an infection? I mean, it's very rare in the 18 plus years we've been doing this, we might have had one or two patients get an infection either because they got into the river, one of our patients or something else, and we're able to treat those side effects. So that's what I love about working with hormone therapy. One of the other questions that popped up is how often are we going to um, do follow-ups on patients? Are these patients going to have to come in on a weekly basis? And that's not what our intent is with this. We're trying to make your life healthier, simpler, and make it easy for you to go on with your normal day. So initially, we'll bring you back four weeks after the insertion. But once you get into a routine, it's once every four to six months, and we'll do your hormone therapy. So that's it in regards to the bioidentical hormone, and I'm going to try to talk about it on a regular basis this year. One of the other questions that popped up recently is, what's the name of our podcast? So we're throwing it out to you. Our viewership, our patients that we have in our practice right now is give us some ideas. What are we going to name this podcast? Because I want it to be about women's health, and I want it to be not only medical, but to talk about whatever is going on in society right now that will deal with women's health. Because the most important thing to me in our practice is women's health and addressing things that are going on in women's health in this country. So thank you for tuning in. And if any questions or concerns, please don't ever hesitate to email us, go on Facebook, Twitter, and we'll answer those questions for you. And I'll see you in a week. Have a great week. Take care.